You're watching EVH and Gear TV, brought to you by Stewart Travel Guitars. See the incredible stowaway travel guitar at stewartguitars.com. Microphones for EVH and Gear TV are provided by Rode Microphones. And official Van Halen merchandise is provided by vanhalenstore.com. Here's your host from Ontario, Canada, EVH artist Eric Broadbent. doing a lot of craziness in that song <laughs> if you heard it, if you tuned in at the very beginning of that song too in the studio i'm actually screaming through my pickups and it's like hey is this thing on it sounded kind of cool had the marshall cranked up actually it was 5150 at the time uh who's here we got nocturnal butterfly my beautiful better half jim dales carlos santin coots 13 brian koteg uh who else we got sonia's here hey sonia um did i miss anybody else i think i got everybody uh, thank you, Carlo. I appreciate that. So, yeah, I wanted to go live today. I wasn't necessarily sure what time I was going to go live, but Kramer's just been, like, driving me to play guitar lately. There's been so much Kramer buzz since before NAM and with NAM. It's kind of the talk of the Internet right now. Um, first of all, thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. I'm going to just run through some tunes. And uh, Tone King had a great show last night. He was going over uh, the new Kramer product with Aljean Go. Steve from Boston had a show a couple nights back as well, too, you know, showing off some new Kramers. 
And it's just, it's really inspiring a lot of people right now, including myself, so having a lot of fun with it. So today we're using the uh, Kramer Vintage Pacer Deluxe 2015 model. We're running strictly into the Line 6 Helix Rack, and that's pretty much it. I'm going to be using probably two presets for the entire show. And the fun thing about this is I've just recently changed my uh, bridge from floating on this guitar, which it came from factory that way, to flush, and uh, I popped on a detune on it. So now it lets me do a lot of cool things. The detune is working flawless. <laughs> Like perfect. Love it. So now it's a very versatile guitar for me. When I was doing some of my band songs before, um, you know, there's a lot of drop D stuff and I couldn't do it with the Kramer. I really, unless I was to, you know, unlock the low E string and I still would throw it out of tune. So I really love this thing now. It's, it's like I said, very, very inspiring to play. So we're going to run through um, a few tunes. Um, Terry's here. Hey, Terry. And Terry, thanks for that tip on the pizza. I might even do that, that uh, pizza pizza. <laughs> I have this one clean patch like there's two presets I use on a regular basis. This is my super clean and I love this thing to death <laughs> Spice of life spice of life with lens finally caught you live. Thank you Michael Collins I'm on my way home from work listening. Thank you So this this is a pretty versatile preset as well, too Lots of reverb Lots of compression, too Throw on some crazy delays and you get some really crazy stuff going on. Here. Hey, buddy. Brad Miller. Hey, Eric. Sounds like the feeling tone from, yeah, for sure, from Van Halen. I wish I knew that song. I don't know how to play it. Uh, Jason Jess says, do you have the Celestian EVHIR? I saw they're available again. was thinking about purchasing. How do you like them? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I do have it. And that dirty preset you heard just a moment ago was using the uh, Celestian um, EVH 5150IRs. I heard some thunder in the house or something. I don't know what that was. So yeah, I have and I recommend them highly. So yes, 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 I highly recommend them. Uh, Judd Lofthouse says, good day. At last I caught you live. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, Carlos says, what am I using? Um, on the clean, you know what? I don't know, Carlo. I forget now. You know what? Um, I don't have HX Edit open. And it's my racks back there. I'll, I'll send you a message after, Carlo, and let you know because I forget what it is. I think it might be the uh, the jazz rivet, you know, the jazz chorus. I think. I'm not positive on that. And then put on the vintage swell delay on top of that. I love that. more songs here. Yeah, and Jason says, can't wait for the Lefty Kramer 84 to be available. Indeed, hello to the new folks. All right, so let's go grab some more songs here. All right, we're going to drop it down into some silence. I love this song. Drop it down to D. And of course, one of my things I love to do in all my Van Halen presets, and this is a Van Halen preset, by the way, um, but it's a very, very versatile Van Halen preset because with one push of a button, I can bring it from vintage Van Halen, you know, okay? I can bring it to more modern with pitch detune. I love that. So we're going to play some silence, and I'm going to mute my microphone so we don't get all this string clack.
That was fun. I messed up my ending on that one. It's funny when you mess up your own songs. So there's a little kind of a... And that was in uh, Eruption... Not Eruption. Um, Unchained Inspired as far as... Nope. Something like that. Mess up my own songs. Most of you wouldn't know that because you haven't heard the song. Well, on here you have, but... I uh, had a few other people jump in too. Chuck Booth. I'm um, not sure if I said hi to Chuck yet. Todd Graff is here. Guitar Hack. Hey, buddy. Thanks for jumping in. I appreciate it. Uh, Paulie D. Um, thanks, man. I appreciate that. And uh, Charles Green is here. Thank you very, very much. And nice to have a, a whole bunch of guitar players and friends here today. And uh, I'm staying in tune pretty good, which is good. Just like the D. I can handle that. Let's try something. This is going to be rough, uh, but fun. This is a song called Shirley that I wrote for my mom. And this one's going to be, like I say, tough because I don't play this one a lot. And we've got to go to a clean patch for it. And I just got to see if I can remember it. I don't play this one often enough. Um, nope. That's a little bit of the lead part. Damn, see, i gotta, I got to practice it. Okay, let's give it a try. This is fun. Coffee lovers here. Max F. Spice of Life. That was awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, let's give it a try. Turn off my mic.
something like that. Who else we got jumping in? EVH 5150 is here. Um, um, it's, it's from my own band, from Finding Core. Um, see, Ben Coombs is here. Hey, Ben. Nice to see you. Johnny Lee, thanks, brother, for jumping in. Um, who else we got? By the way, too, uh, what camera am I on? Okay, there we are. Let's jump over this camera for a sec. Our own Nocturnal Butterfly, Sandra Lee, she's got a contest over on her YouTube channel right now, too. I think it's, uh, for, it's for a birthday celebration this month. Runs up until her birthday, February 28th, and she's giving away, I think it's a $25 Amazon gift card. So check that out. Click on her name in the chat. You can jump over to her channel, and you can enter to win that. It'd be pretty cool. 25 bucks, Amazon.com or .ca, wherever you live. Surely by Finding Core, EVH 5150. Thank you. We'll try, we'll try a rocking one now. How about we do that? Want to kick it up a little bit? And by the way, Nocturnal Butterfly, if you're listening, can you send Junior down with a couple of Kleenex? I'm getting a bit of a stuffy nose. And would, I missed a comment here as well, too. Bring a couple if you can. Brad Miller. Uh, let me see here. Ben Coombs. Hey, hey, hey. And I'm looking for this comment here. Heading out shortly. Just even loading up. Cool, cool. And who is that from? From Brian. Did I miss a comment from Brian? I have the world's best producer. Oh, yeah, there he is. Uh, hey, Eric, you inspired me to pull up my old songs that I wrote when I was in Smear. Uh, I was a bass player back then, so it'd be interesting to play all that stuff as a guitar player. And I would for sure. It would be really cool. And I tried one day playing uh, my songs on bass and because uh, I, didn't, I didn't write the bass lines. And it's uh, it's neat. It's So I can, I can see that being fun for you. And I hope you do it. And I'm glad that there is uh, some inspiration. Ben66 says, nice tune. Thank you. Let's try some rock and stuff now for some fun. Yeah, and thank you, Brad Miller, on the use of octaves. I do that a lot. I do that a lot. And I've got the action in this guitar set so incredibly stupid low. It's almost in the buzz zone, as a matter of fact. Almost buzzing on the high E string, but I like my action super, super low, so you can really get the... Uh... I don't play too much of that stuff. Copyright. I like it. Okay, let's gonna rock it up. Let's go into a, a slightly newer record. Let me see here. And here we go. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Got it ready. That was pardon me. I'm sorry. Got a bit of a cold coming on. I think I just got over the flu. That was that was bad. Let's switch over another camera. I had a really bad flu for about two days. Wiped me right out. Um. JB pickup, uh, J, uh, JB and JN in this guitar, EVH 5150. Thank you. Uh, let's jump to another record here. All right. So here's one a lot of people hear me play. This one's called Fall Silent. This one rocks pretty cool. Let's get into a dirty patch and let's step it up. Um, actually, we'll keep the um, pitchy tune off until the chorus. What I do on this song here, um, so it's kind of a rock and riff, and then when I go into the... Um, I guess it'd be the chorus. Um, um, I step on the pitch tune just to fatten it up for that part. So, so we'll try it. We'll see how it sounds. All right, here we go. Oh, wake up. 
That was fun. That's a fun song. I love playing that song. I had a little trouble reaching the 22nd fret on that one, but uh, I love the wah on that one. The solo's kind of uh, like this, kind of neat. <laughs> A lot of big bands in that one. A lot of fun. We've got a bunch of new people here in the chat. They're totally, totally awesome. If you are new here, please do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button right now. I'd love to have you. I promise to work just as hard to keep you as a subscriber as I did to get you. And make sure to hit that bell. Please hit that bell. Turn on all notifications. Because even though I do like regular um, you know, uh, scheduled shows, Fridays, Sundays, Mondays, and Tuesdays for the different various shows I have here, there's obviously EVH and Gear TV. There's uh, Kramer Corner. There's the Helix Hour and Rocking Dead. So there's a lot of kind of unplanned uh, broadcasts. So you get those notifications, you'll know when I'm live. So thank you very much. Um, and yes, yes, good call, Ben. You know your pedals. I was using, a, no, I'm not using a virtual pedal. Or I mean a real pedal. I'm using a virtual pedal. That was a flanger for that effect. And uh, in the studio, when uh, when I recorded that song, the very f- we recorded it twice, two different singers. And the first time, I wanted an EVH flanger on there. This one, I'm hitting the D and the, and the C chords, I think it was. Um, and the, the producer just didn't get a really good uh, sound on the first one. So the second time I did it, so I'm hitting those chords there. Let me see. And then... So yeah, there's a flanger on that. And you kind of get that Van Halen tone with that one too. Right, so how's it go? down in D. Hey, Rick Hefner's here, buddy. How's it going? Dan Will Light. Uh, Lamore Music. Bill Hit, thank you. Man, you guys rock. I really appreciate this. All right, let's drop it down to D, and this is a fun one. I love this one. Um, This one is called... I keep wondering which camera I'm on. I'm on on this camera. Uh, This one is called uh, Runaway, and it's a real picture like just driving one hand on the steering wheel. You know, really cool car. Chug, chug, chug down the street. Just, It's really awesome. Let me get a sip. And this is a fun one to play. Really, really, really simple guitar solo. A lot of my solos are simple. And actually, I'm using, to, for the effect on that song, let me see here. Uh, so I'm actually, when I recorded it in the studio, I'm using the EVH Phase 90 with the speed full full on. So it's giving a really fast tremolo effect. Tre- tremolo effect. People always excuse me how I say tremolo. Tremolo, tremolo. But uh, so now what I do is I embellish it. I would normally just hold it. Bum, bum, bum. Really simple f- solo, but it fits the song. And so now what I'll do is I'll kind of maybe embellish it with a little bit of wah. <laughs> Something like that. So we'll see how it goes. I'm having a hard time with this, where I'm sitting with the stool reaching the wall pedal. I wonder if I bring it maybe closer. I'm using the Mission Engineering Expression pedal, by the way, and I'm, tr- I'm triggering a, um, I think it's a weeper inside line six. So I, I do love the wall. <laughs> So it's a nice sounding wah. And it actually shuts itself off after three milliseconds of not using it. Very, very cool. Uh, Jim Wan, really liking your Wan. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right. Really liking your tone. Thank you very much. I appreciate that greatly. And Sonia has a question. Uh, does that guitar have a switch to simply drop? To, no. Well, yes and no. Not like an electronic switch, but um, yes, Sonia does have the D tuna on it. So if you go like that. So you're down. <laughs> Yep, so I guess it's technically a switch, yep, and it works really, really cool. Um, on my Variax, I have the Line 6 Variax. I, I can tune to any tuning just by, you know, uh, switching a preset on my on my uh, control or a toggle on the guitar. So I go to, like, to not only different tunings, but I can play like a 12-string. Uh, a string. I can play a Martin acoustic. I can play a banjo, uh, sitar, and just about anything. So there you go. There you go. I hope that answers your question, and Ben answered it as well, too. Uh, and Brian Cote says, wah on the Line 6 Helix is awesome. I love mine. Pretty much I've done away with all pedals. I only have a couple pedals left in the house. 
So we're going to play this one here called Runaway. Dying of Thirst. Working up a sweat, which is good. Okay, got to drop it down to D, and this one has a fun harmonic in it. I love that. That's that's the whole riff. And then you get this really chuggy. And watch me, watch for my faces, because you'll tell when I'm happy, uh, and if I'm doing okay, and if I'm not. But when I hit the... Uh, there we go. There's a happy one. I am not a Zach Wild squealer, but when I hit those, it's it's magical. It's it's a total magical moment, and I don't hit them every time. So when I yeah, I, when I hit them, uh, you know, we should almost have a ding when I hit a good one. But let's try it. Let's get rid of the microphone. I hit him all but one. I got really lucky in that one. Pardon me again. I'm sorry. Um, I, all but one. So when you're in the zone, when you're not thinking about it, you hit him every time. When you're thinking about it, you never hit him. And uh, like I saw a few people guitar hack, and I think Ben Coons was saying as well, too, sometimes it's hit or miss with them. It's really tricky. And I find sometimes the hardest time is me on the uh, on the low E string because it's so easy to either pull your uh, the, the low E string right off the neck of the guitar, like, you know, like that kind of thing. On other strings, no problem. And especially on these strings, you hear me doing like that. 
No, I can't do it, so I'm trying. Cool. Uh, Will Varela, um, Gary Thorn, did you say your bridge is resting on the body so detuner works correctly? I took mine off my patient because it wouldn't stay in tune. Yeah, I did bring it back. It's flush, right flush with the body. Another thing you can do there, Gary, if you don't want to uh, make your, if you don't want to like recess your, your bridge, excuse me, um, and get a trim stopper from Adam Reaver at fu-tone.com. It's about a $25 part and it's a little set screw and it goes and it touches your bridge and it keeps it from going, um, forward or, or forward or backward. I know I should say forward. It keeps it from going backward. And another nice advantage to that is if it's not a permanent solution, you could back the screw back off and your guitar is back to floating. And it also gives you the extra little bit of resonance, like the bridge is connecting to, it's, everything's connected. Um, so there's more of a resonance, more tone, sustain, stuff like that. So that's an easy thing to do as well too. Uh, hope I didn't miss any questions. Um, Roseanne, Rosanna Jude says, you are the best. Thank you. Appreciate that. Lots of new people. And if you're just jumping in now, uh, again, please uh, hit that subscribe button. Love to have you as subscribers here. Um, channel's been, been doing pretty well lately. I'm really blessed to have the uh, people I have here uh, tune in on a regular uh, basis. I think Rob Ross, I don't think I mentioned you. Thank you for tuning in. Um, let me see here. And you know what? I know Rosanna says, do I sing? A little bit. Um, maybe maybe more down the road. I only sang back up in the band. Uh, so I, I, I'm not about to sing today, that's for sure. Frank Rashad is here. Hey, buddy, I got to drop you an email back as well, too. I saw your email come in. Thank you so much. Um, hope I'm, am I getting some slowdown on my camera? I think I am. That's weird. Is it? I'm not too bad. Um, so thanks thanks for jumping in. So Frank, as Frank knows, I'm playing the Line 6 Helix Rack. That's my sound. Um, very, very simple. Helix Rack to the mixer. Off to you guys. And uh, I totally love my, my this. Here's the thing. Actually, I'm going to mute the guitar for a second. I'll tell you how simple my setup is. Okay, so that should be able to take this out. So instead of tripping over chords, even though I'm in a small studio here, it's having chords at my feet are very cumbersome and, you know, reaching for a wah pedal or whatever. And then if I turn my chair, I get strangled up my own chord. I'm using the Line 6 Relay 10, G10 wireless. Really, really simple. It comes now with um, this little right angle adapter for most guitars. Um, and I just pop that on. It'll go green. It's ready to go. And the, the, uh, the partner to it, the dock, whatever you want to call it, is back at the rack. And let me see if I can show you. Turn back to the screen for a sec. Go here. So there is the Helix rack, and right where my finger is right there, you can't see it, but that's where the uh, Line 6 Relay um, dock is, and it goes right into the rack. You can probably see one little cord. Um, let me see here. Let me see here. Um, let's go back over here, and I think I have some other questions, but that's it. That's all I use. Just pop that on, and I'm ready to rock. I muted my... Um, make sure she didn't hear the, the pop, you know, because he went like that, right? I'll turn that back on. Helix rack. And I think there's a question. Let's go down towards the bottom. Um, EVH5150 had to come. Um, where do I find the song? Surely. It's beautiful, bro. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, EVH. Um, if you go to my Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash EVHGearTV, I have about four tiers there. They're all very, very affordable. I mean, super, super affordable. I think, don't quote me, but I think my one tier at four bucks, and please forgive me if I'm wrong, I think that lets you download all my music. Uh, I have to ask my manager, <laughs> Nocturnal, who manages everything I do. She's put it, put everything together for me. And uh, when I say manager, I, I just mean someone who manages my day-to-day -day stuff because uh, with, without her, I'd be completely lost. I don't know what I'm doing. But I think it's um, I think it's the $4 tier, and you get all my songs, plus two albums, plus two bonus tracks. So there, Chris Link is here. Say hello, Eric. Nice to have you tuning in. Michael Easter, getting closer to 11K. I know we're getting close. Isn't that nice? I love it. Thank you so very much. Uh, and Rosanna Jude says, my boyfriend plays a guitar. Very cool. I hope, he's, I hope he enjoys it, and I'm sure I hope you enjoy listening to him play. Um, it is a beautiful instrument. I tell you one thing, um, guitar, is, it will always be there for you. You know, you might, you can lose a job, you can lose this, you can lose that, um, but the, the guitar is always there for you. Whether you're in a good mood or a bad mood, it's, uh, it's there for you. And I find sometimes if I'm in a sour mood, whatever, I'll pick up the guitar, and, and sometimes it's magical, and sometimes I'm too sour of a mood, and then, you know, it, your mood changes how you'd play guitar. And other days when you're in a great mood, you know, it just, it sings along with you. And what I like about this, by using like a, my system I'm telling you about right now, the Helix, I come in here every day, I plug in, the wireless is right ready to go, unless, and I got to start charging it more often. I don't charge it that often, which goes to show you how long it lasts too. But every day I plug in, I have the same song, the same tone I want. The only thing that changes from day to day is not room acoustics, not anything else, it's just your mood and how you play the guitar. If you suck one day, well, it's just the nature of the beast. The next day you come back, 
but I plug in and go. It's so convenient. And that's made me play way more guitar than I've ever played in my life. This is definitely no sales pitch. It is what it is. I've gotten rid of pedals because I don't, well, I only have a couple left, but this thing just makes me play guitar. And whether it's Helix or it's, it's, it's Head Rush or it's Kemper or whoever, whatever you're using out there, if it makes you play more guitar, then that's the product for you. I happen to choose uh, the Line 6 brand. But uh, yeah, it's lots of fun stuff. Let me see the crowbar. I have an old Voyager in nuclear yellow mint condition. I wish I had time to play it. Looking for um, an amp for around the house, like a 20 or 30 watt. Um, the Boss Katanas are really nice. Uh, no, the, I think the smallest one they make other than, other than the Mini is uh, the Katana 50. Line 6 has got some great products. Uh, phenomenal amplifiers. Now, I'm not too versed on their amplifiers. I don't play a lot of the amplifiers. I've never actually... Have I even owned one? I don't think I have. Um, I'm using the Line 6 Power Cabs, and those are much more powerful, and you need something like a Helix or something to go to that. But I would say... I would say Boss Katana, and I highly recommend that one. Um, or look at some of the Line 6, uh, I think there's Spiders and things like that as well too. So some really, really cool products there. Line6.com, check it out. And best thing is go to a music store and, and try it in person and see what you think because what I may say rocks, it, your ears may say differently. So it has to sound good for you. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Um, Aaron Songs is here. How's it going? I mean, we have a lot of uh, a lot of people joining us today. appreciate that. Let's, um, let me see here. Um, uh, oh, I'm down to D. <laughs> I'm not used to having a D tune on this guitar. Okay, let's play one called... Um, let's play Fantasy. This is fun. All right, here we go. And I always hated playing with this one before when I didn't have my wah pedal hooked up, stuff like that, because it's very wah pedal driven for the solo. Um, so, but I have the wah, and we're good to go. Let's try it.
That's a fun one to play. I just have to send a message here for, to my producer. Here we go. Bear with me. Let me see. I have my fingers here. Someone needs an email address or something. Okay. Robert Ortiz is here. Thank you. Uh, Frank Rashad. Nice. Thanks, buddy. Uh, Brad Miller. I was talking to friends there as well. Guitar Hack. We're all good. Awesome. Um, let me see. Am I missing anything else? I don't think so. Th uh, th thrash metal in, in fun riffs. I'm formerly known as uh, Slayer Z Slayer Z Slayer Eiser. Sorry, Slayer Eiser, something like that. <laughs> okay. Um, and Wolver Ellis says I never really liked Ottawa, but this sounds good. And actually, um, I, I might have said that wrong too. It's it's not an Ottawa. Um, it's auto off. Let me let me grab it and show you. Okay, one sec. This comes from the good folks at Mission Engineering. I've got a lot of dog hair. We have dogs in the house, so please forgive me for the dog hair here. Um, Mission Engineering. It's a real wah pedal. It's a real expression pedal. I shouldn't say it's a wah pedal. It's a real pedal. It weighs a ton, just like a typical, you know, crybaby. Um, and speaking of which, uh, you know, rest in peace, Jim Dunlop. That was a really sad loss this week. Um, but it feels like a crybaby. Looks like kind of that style. Very, very heavy, but it's an expression pedal. Hooks up with a quarter-inch cable to your Helix products or any product that you have that would take... Um, you know, expression pedals. I can use this to control amounts of reverb. I can use it as a volume pedal. I can, in this case, I'm using it as a wah. That's the only thing I use with, and it's plugged into my Helix control, which goes back to the rack way back there. Um, and with Helix, I've got a choice. I, I should know this, and, and Frank will be disappointed that I don't know every wah pedal in there, but uh, I think there's about six to eight wahs. Not 68, 6 to 8, somewhere around there, uh, different wads you can choose from. And so I've got it set to be kind of like my, either the Crybaby, which is called Weeper, and then there's another one in there as well too. Um, I forget the name of it, but it's um, like the uh, Vox V847 or whatever that was. I did a shootout on those videos, uh, those wah pedals, a Vox and an EVH wah and a Crybaby years ago on my channel. And they were my favorite wahs. I've got the exact same sound with Helix and my ears can't tell the difference. I mean, some people, you know, with a really fine studio engineer's ear, they may notice the difference. I, I doubt it, um, but that's it. So when I said auto wah, because I don't want to toggle, and it doesn't have a toe switch. So some of the uh, expression pedals you get from those guys, um, they have uh, like a toe switch. So you can push it down and click, and it'll turn off the uh, the wah. I can set mine so with a certain amount of inactivity. So when I rock it back to like less than 2% engaged, and I don't touch it for about so many milliseconds, about 3 milliseconds, the wah goes off. So I can basically do my wahing, take my foot off, and it's, it's back. So it's pretty cool. Hook that back up real quick. And it's heavy, just dropped it on my toe. And the, and the cool thing is, I don't have to plug my guitar into it. Like normally you'd plug into a wah and then into your pedals and stuff like that. It just plugs into the Helix control, which all goes back via, you know, a Cat45 network cable back to Helix. Let me see here, Brad Miller. Uh, I know, I know how to do that. Yes, <laughs> yes, you do, Brad. You and, and Brad's such a patient soul. He asked me to do a video explaining it, and this is one of the very few times that I'm glad I didn't do something I was asked. Because he asked me, "Would you do a video for me?" And I promised him I'd do it. Just been stupid, stupid busy schedule, and he did the. Vi he figured it out himself, and he shot the video. So that's. I'm glad I didn't do it for you, Brad. I know that sounds silly, and I know you wouldn't know what I'm saying because you learned it on your own, and you made the video and you shared it with other people. So hats off to you. Awesome. Yes, rest in peace, Jim Dunlop, for sure. What a, what a legend. What a legend. There's not a day that goes by, I'm sure, in any musician's life, sometimes non-musician's life, that you don't mention that name. I mean, everyone's got some Jim Dunlop picks kicking around, uh, you know, strings, you know, pedals. I mean, the legend, right? Totally a legend. Um, did you say wah when you hit your two? <laughs> yeah, did I say wah, 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 I did. Um, oh, cool. Gary Holtz is in the car heading to Gary Kramer's place. And I think you mentioned earlier, too, that uh, he's just getting over the Namthrax. So uh, um, tell him, I wish him my best. And uh, man, oh, man, did we have it a, a great time at his place. Uh, Eric Jr. and I were there uh, for three days in wine country in uh, Paso Robles. Um, just absolutely beautiful. And we shot a documentary. That's something I want to tell you about, especially for you new people that are here today. This is something very, very cool. Your regulars probably know about this. But I really encourage you to tune in this Tuesday night, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. 
um, we have a premiere. And I've never, I've, I've only done one premiere video ever, but it's, pre you guys know what premieres are like. You can join in. It's going to be a live show, except for, you know, it's just a, it's a live video, not me, but we'll be in the chat with you. And it's the interview I did at Gary Kramer's. It's about 48 minutes long. It, uh, it's part one of two and it's right, right at his home. It's actually at the, in front of the guest home, which is, uh, which is really, really cool. And that's where we were staying in actually the second guest home. Um, but a very nice candid interview with, with the legend himself, the founder of uh, Kramer Guitars. And there's a couple of really funny stories in there. And I'm not going to not going to give any of them away here, but, um, I, I think Gary was impressed in a couple of times because he, I would say, Oh, that's when you did such and such. He's like, how did you know that? I'm like, well, I researched for you, sir. You know, I was trying to be, you know, it was, it was humorous, but I, I wanted to be so respectful and I was calling him sir. And, you know, it was, it was pretty cool. Um, but I think he may be watching possibly too tonight as well. I know Gary Holt's going to be here and, uh, it's going to be a really fun night. So we'll, we'll be live there with you as well and uh, sharing thoughts back and forth, but there's a really good funny Floyd Rose story in there that I don't think anybody knows about except for some of the diehards. So, um, you want to tune in and just for the, for that, plus some of these other little tidbits that he shared with us. And, um, also too, Junior and I got to play, um, the, the him and I are the only two human beings on earth. They got to play this one Kramer bass. Um, it was it, it was the very first one off the line given to Gary himself when he was uh, when he founded Kramer. And um, I said I asked him a question about it, and I said, um, uh, "How many people have played? Uh, tell us about that bass, whatever." And he says, "Well, it's one of a kind. No one has ever played it except for Eric Jr. and yourself." So that was that was pretty awesome. Um, that was an experience. It's like it's kind of like I can't even give you an example. To me, it's like almost like wearing Neil Armstrong's boots that walked on the moon. It's kind of that cool. Um, I love it. And what happened to my what happened to my tone? Oh, there we go. Oh, my wah pedal was engaged. That's why. Okay, so let's um and no, and exactly a thrash metal. Yeah, Gary Holt gets that confused a lot. It's it's not uh, it's not the thrash guitarist Gary Holt. It's a it's a different Gary Holt. Um, he's the coolest Gary Holt I know because I only know one Gary Holt. But he's awesome. He was great for us in. Uh, in uh, Nam and uh, California, it was a real pleasure meeting him in person. He's I was a fan of the show, and I'll, I'll I'll share I'll share the little story how this all came to be, how I met Gary Holt, which turned into meeting Gary Kramer. Excuse me, a bit of a runny nose again. I'm very sorry. Um, so Gary Gary Holt had commented on one of my videos, and said um, I think it was one of the Kramer Corner ones, whatever. And I, I forget the exact thing. He could probably tell you more, but we'll we'll share this in another uh, in detail later. But um, he said, oh, um, Gary Kramer would like to come on your show and I can get you Gary Kramer, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, okay. This is not my first rodeo when it comes to people sending me comments and they I can do this for you and I can do this for you. It's like you know, nine times out of 10, they're pulling your leg, right? So I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he commented a couple more times. And then, um, said, I think we exchanged email addresses and we, you know, that it escalated a little further and we talked a little bit more and it was like, okay, well, this is still not buying it because, you know, it's like saying, yeah, Eddie Van Halen's going to come over tomorrow. It's like one of those things, right? Like you're like, you know, it's too, too monumental, too good to be true. And he goes, well, here, he goes, I've given, um, I've given Gary Kramer your phone number and um, he, he's expecting a call. And I call and I know I've heard interviews with Gary before. I've heard him speak. I know his voice. I spoke to him on the phone. And I was like, wow, this is actually for a real deal. Um, so spoke to him for a little bit and, you know, trying to keep my cool and composure. As, as a lot of you know, when I, I interview a lot of uh, famous people on the show and I don't fanboy out, right? So I can kind of keep it in check a little bit. So I've been seasoned that way um, to, to not fanboy out. So speaking to him was a little nervous, but I spoke to him on the phone. And um, then he says, yeah, I'd like to do the show. I'd like to come on your show, your camera corner show. I'm like, wow, okay. And he said, but I don't think the... Um, the webcam's gonna cut it. Like you just, you know, like you only, you only see like one dimension from a webcam, just like you're seeing right now. You're seeing this. You don't really see much. And if I had all kinds of multiple cameras, I could, you know, and a, and a producer, I could pan and all that kind of stuff. But it would still be a, a two-dimensional experience. Um, he says, "Why don't you and your team come here?" I'm like, first of all, my team is myself, Eric Jr. and Nocturnal here. And I was like, "But that's like four thousand miles away, almost, about thirty-five hundred miles away." And then I was thinking, well. I'm going to be in NAM in January. This is all started back in November. And um, so I said, I'm going to be in NAM in January and the planets aligned, whatever, and so on. So I'm not going to talk too much about it because the, the show's coming up, but there's good stuff in the interview. But it worked out. After NAM, we went out there for three days and uh, was I drove back with him. Eric and I, uh, Junior, drove back with Gary Kramer himself to his place. 
uh, long time through the mountains and everything. And, you know, had a nice long talk the whole way. And then Gary Holt uh, in turn took us back from uh, Gary Kramer's place in a, in a nice badass, uh, you know, a big charger and uh, taking the Pacific Coast coming back home was just awesome. I couldn't think of a cooler way to come back, um, you know, in a muscle car on the on the Pacific Coast it was beautiful. But um, yeah, I mean, we they, you go, we're at Gary Kramer's place. Here, we want a Floyd Rose. You want this? You want this? So like, uh, wow, thank you, sir. And, and the hospitality between him and his wife, uh, we had, uh, you know, home cooked meals. Uh, pretty much every day. It was, uh, we were part of the family for three days, something I will never, ever forget. And the coolest thing is I'll take my excitement out of the, out of it. I got to watch it through a 12 year old boy's eyes, a little Eric Jr. And it was just an experience that yeah, he'll never, ever forget playing instruments that were just insane. It was great. You're really, really cool. Um, and Brad says, I appreciate you uh, not helping me. <laughs> it was a great learning experience. Didn't need to take the easy way. There you go. You don't often, you don't often hear that. I, I appreciate you not helping me. <laughs> Um, uh, Island Sounds, will Kramer be continuing with the Pacer Classic model? Um, I don't want to quote, um, but I, at this moment, and please, this is not a fact. This is not a fact. I don't think so, because there were some questions that popped up the other day, and Al John had said, um, um, you know, get them while you can, just like this model as well, too, Vintage Pacer Deluxe. There's still some of these in stores in the, in the Flake models, um, but I don't think their immediate plans are to continue. Again, that's my speculation, and I'm fairly certain on that. Um, but, uh, as, as we know, like they've just launched a whole new lineup for NAM, and they will be, um, you know, like Aljon says, your dollar, you vote with your wallet, you buy these guitars, it will continue the success of the brand and they could bring out new models. I think, I think we're just kind of at, we're at the relaunch, re, the reboot, as Aljon says from Gibson Kramer, um, wait and see. I think there'll be some really cool things coming out, uh, enough, enough, um, you know, to get us by for now and then more from there. And there's another question too. Um, uh, Gary says, do you keep the micro pickup switch in your Kramers? I do right now, but I do want to change it. Uh, they did that obviously to be kind of period accurate. That's that little guy right there. And I think that switch is responsible for a lot of guitar players cutting themselves. When you ever see a bloody Kramer on stage, that's one of the reasons why they are sharp as a, as a knife. Uh, and I haven't done it yet. Because you know, I'm usually playing in a controlled environment here. I do keep it, but I'm going to be switching it to a little, like the mini micro toggle, whatever. That's not so sharp. Um, one thing I did do, though, um, is I, uh, I took out the treble bleed mods. They come with the treble bleed mod. Um, I, myself, for high gain stuff, don't like that. All I did was just snip it, and it's gone. So uh, I, I removed that. A lot of them, um, I think probably all the Kramers come with a treble bleed mod. Um, I'm not saying I'm not encouraging people to to remove it. You may love it. Um, I just don't like that particular thing, so I just bypassed it. Um, let me see here. All right. Um, I made a slideshow from the Buck Owens Museum through Desert in California called Enterprise. Gave me a free challenger. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and Chris Link says, I personally love the mini toggles. Yeah, see, it's different for everybody, right? If you're using it, like, as long as you're not hitting it on its side, it's no problem, but you can do the... You know, the old uh, kill switch type of thing. You can roll the neck volume back. And go. Something like that, yeah. Um, let's try another one. Let's do, um, let's, do a, let's do a nice clean one. We're going to do a song called Pass You By. We'll be wrapping up here soon, too. I'm not even sure what time I went live. I think it was around 4, so we're almost at the hour. A little bit out of tune. Yeah, there we go. All right. This one's called Pass You By. This is a fun one.
Thank you, Frank. I appreciate that. He said something along the lines of his killer. Uh, um, I appreciate that. Thank you so very, very much. Um, the, that's probably one of the best things. I, honestly, from things I've written in my life musically, I'll show you my favorite part. And I think this is the best thing I've ever written in my life. And the reason why is because mu music should move you, move you. And I don't know how this affects you, but this point, this particular section of the, of the song, I, I get goosebumps on it just because it's a, it, it's not great guitar playing. It's not even, you know, it's just what it is. But it's it's an emotion for me. This is part right here. Simple notes. And it's, I mean, this solo is so kindergarten simple, but I love that climb. And it's it's kind of a counter melody to what the singer is doing. Right here. So the whole solo goes like this. That's kind of neat. Yeah, like a vocal melody. Sure, sure is. Ben six six, Burns or Ben's and Ben. Seven. Sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Yeah, I love that. That's probably the, the the favorite thing I've ever written as far as a lead. What else have I got I can play for? We'll wrap up very soon here. You know what? We're gonna play one. This is gonna be really cool. Um, and I'm not gonna. I don't have it uh, programmed into my Helix right now to have a real nice. You know what? What do we have? Um, what about Mr. Clean? <laughs> Mr. Clean and Super Clean. Oh, I don't have any pre or any uh, stomps on that one. Let's see. Okay, we're gonna use we're gonna use Super Clean here. I really wish I had um, a, trem a tremolo to use for this. We're gonna play a song called uh, Fly, and it would really sound nice with uh, the tremolo on it. But let's see here. I'm gonna go back to the first album. We'll be wrapping up here soon too. Thanks for your patience and hanging in so long. This is great. I'm honored. Okay, this is fun. And Fly is another song too. It'd probably be a close secondary for me as far as uh, moments. That when there's, I'm doing this little simple arpeggiated uh, E chord. Um, and it, it, to me, it feels like riding in a little canoe, uh, you know, over some soft waves. And when I would play it with the band, you know, I would just be zoned right out. So, okay, here we go. Let's give the Fly a try. Godspeed.
Awesome, that's fun. Yeah, Gary Holt mentioned something in the chat there about uh, he has a, um, a drag racing Volkswagen bug. Um, as cool as that Challenger is, he's got this racing bug. I got to see his engine in it at his house. Absolutely crazy. I th he'll, he'll comment in the chat. I think he said something like 350 horsepower, I think, and a Volkswagen bug. Um, insane. And I, I think he fired it up the other day for the first time in about a year or so. And he's getting that kind of restored and ready for the road. Um, com comment, let me know what, uh, um, what your horsepower is in that thing. Um, and John Parsons says, uh, what drew you to the line six products over other systems? Love this format of shows. Thank, thank you, John. I'm going to be, I'm going to tell you it's, it hit me by complete accident. Um, and let me see. Frank Rashad says a great show is awesome chat and amazing music and playing. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Frank. Frank, I got it. And I will reply to your email uh, tonight as well, too, since I'm off the show here. Um, what brought me to it was a guest. Um, I had Jeff Waters from the Canadian metal band Annihilator. They're kind of like Canadian Slayer, uh, well-respected in the industry. And he was on the show. We we're talking all about EVH because he's a big EVH fan. He's a Gibson Epiphone endorsee and um, online six uh, artist as well, as far as I know. Um, and um, he started talking about this Helix thing. And like, what is Helix? Like, I mean, I've heard of it. I heard of Helix. The only other thing I knew about Helix was Helix, the Canadian band. I didn't know about this product called Helix for the most part. And he started talking about how he used it on on the last couple albums exclusively in a metal band using, you know, a module, right? And I'm like, well, tell me all about it. And so I got, I got really interested in it and I tried one very shortly after it's like to find out what it was all about. And from the moment I plugged in, I was sold. Now for a while there, I was, it was, it was a very long procedure for me to let go of amplifiers and pedals. It was like one of those things where I, well, they've been with me since I, you know, I was a teenager, so many different amplifiers and so many different pedals. And, um, you know, I was using the best of both worlds for a while where I was using kind of a wet, dry, wet. I would go wet left and right with a Helix sound and I'd go out dry to a 5150, one of my amps back there, you can see it back there. Um, and that would be my dry signal at the center. And I've since then just given that up. I just go strictly um, all digital. And, you know, I'm sure if I played, if I plugged into any of the other ones, I'm sure I'd find some great things about them. Like I've been a Boss fan for many, many years. Uh, I haven't tried their new one, like the GT1000, I think it's called something like that. Uh, I'm sure I would dig it, um, but there's several things that uh, make me stay with the product. Number one is it makes me happy as a guitar player. It makes me play a little bit better, and I'm not going to lie. I play, I, I sound a little bit better when I play Helix, and I probably would um, through a regular amplifier. Maybe it, it doesn't hide some of my mistakes, maybe, but you know what? If it makes me think I'm playing better, then who cares? That's why I play it. It makes me, it makes me happy as a guitar player. I like the sounds. I find it very, very, the user interface is extremely easy. I think it's probably one of the easiest out there. As I've talked on my other shows on the Helix Hour show and stuff like that as well too, I can now, I could paint uh, a, um, like when I lay out my effects, what I want in amplifiers, I could literally, 
uh, painted out without even plugging into any of the effects and dialing them in. And then when I when I go to play, I'm ready to go. I might just have to change a delay, but it's so easy just to drag and drop what you want. And uh, it's it's a, it's a no brainer for me. I, I really like it. But then you can also also do these things as well too. Let's see, I, okay, I don't have it plugged in, so I can show you. If you want to get into the Helix game without you know a huge major investment, you can go with the Stomp as well too. HX Stomp. Uh, small version. It's small version of Helix, basically. Uh, the only limitation is uh, six effects blocks, um, at least for, for now. Um, six effects blocks. So, I mean, if you reverb, delay, amplifier, a couple of effects, whatever, and all kinds of user presets. It's shareable with your friends, all that kind of stuff. And that's a much more affordable um, alternative as well, too. And then there's also Helix Native, which you can buy uh, for your computer. And as long as you have like a, a DAW, like a, a Logic in, in Mac, or, you know, Cakewalk, or do people even use Cakewalk anymore? Cubase, um, you know, Pro Tools, that kind of stuff. Uh, that works as well, too. So that's a very, very long answer. <laughs> um, uh, Island Sound says, Erica, you into instrumental rock such as Joe Satriani, see by Yes, hell yes. Um, Joe Satriani is probably my world's uh, second favorite guitarist, and I have to still put Eddie on the, on the pedestal. It's Eddie Van Halen is my life. Um, and Joe Satriani, I was a Steve Vai fan for like a, the longest time. I actually left Van Halen stuff for a while. I didn't even listen to Van Halen for well, a couple of years. It was strictly Steve Vai. Once like Flexible came out, Flexible Leftovers and that kind of stuff. I mean, I was hooked. Alcatraz, I was so into that. Um, but I'm still more of a fan of, of uh, Joe. I just find Joe's the, more of the um, improv guy, um, whereas Steve is very, very technical. And they both have their thing. Um, but I got to go see um, the... Generation Axe tour with actually a couple of my buddies, uh, um, uh, Carlos Santon, who may still be here. I'm not sure. Um, he's one of our mods and one of my good friends. And Jay, obviously, everyone knows Jason Sedites. The three of us went down together. We saw that tour with Steve Vai, um, uh, Ingve Malmsteen, Nuna Betancourt, Tosin Abasi. And who am I missing? Is that, did I get them all? Did I forget, if I forget anyone, I think that might be it. It was absolutely insane. Um, let me see here. Uh, Dangerous Criminals uh, is stopping by. Thank you. I appreciate it. And yeah, the car weighs 1,800 pounds. Um, and uh, 2,387cc tw with dual 52 millimeter uh, Weber carbs, Weber carbs. That's on that Volkswagen. That's just really awesome. And Gary, I think I saw you mention that you might be going live on Facebook after from Gary Kramer. So that'd be great. I'll pop in for that for sure. I'll definitely do that and say hi. Um, I know I might have missed a few other things here. Um, Chris says, thank you. No problem. Um, let me see. What else? We have one more song here. Okay, let's get rid of all that swelly stuff. All oh, that sounds nice, doesn't it? It's a lot of effects. song called touch i know nocturnal butterfly likes this one let's give this one a shot maybe some distortion for this one all right there we go here we go
I lied. I'm going to do one more. You've already heard it today. I'm going to end it on a really rock, and we're going to play um, Fall Silent one more time. I'm going to let everybody go, and I'm going to try to catch uh, Gary Holt's live stream from Gary Kramer's place. Um, yes, Chuck Halen says, um, this is original by Eric and his band. Yes, uh, from Finding Core. And again, uh, if you're new here, please, I saw a bunch of new people here. Uh, hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. I would love to have you. We're getting close to 11,000 subscribers. Let's do it, man. We can do it together. And for any, any of you that like the music that you've heard me play today, it is available for uh, to download uh, very affordably through my Patreon, patreon.com slash TV. The links are in the description, so you can check that out as well, too. Um, and before I let you go as well, too, please tune in Tuesday night for the premiere, premiere of our interview with Gary Kramer himself. It's called In the Company of Gary Kramer. It's going to be a really cool interview, a candid interview, about 48 minutes long. It will be... Um, it will be uh, live live streaming, and we can all chat together. I'll be in there with you as well. Nocturne will be in there. Probably Eric Jr. will be in there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, really, really cool. I appreciate this. Is, I have a great time with you today. This is awesome. I'm in a good mood. Uh, guitar is playing good. The sound is good. Uh, and uh, happy happy bunch here. This is a great way to spend a day. All right, so we're going to go and do... I'm out of breath. That's a good thing. Okay, we're going to play Fall Silent, and I'm going to let you guys and girls go. All right, rock and roll. Thank you so much. Been an absolute pleasure with you today. Kept from Boston. My sub brother, long time Kramer player here. Awesome. Awesome. Make sure to check out my Kramer Corner show. Premieres, like, like I say, Tuesday night, 9 o'clock uh, Eastern Time. Great to, great to meet another uh, long time Kramer fan. <laughs> Take care, Frank. Love you, buddy. Awesome, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm going to wrap up here because it's enough useless wanking for the day. I had a great time with you. This was a, a great, it feels like a Sunday for some reason, uh, Saturday, and I uh, had a fun, fun evening with you. I hope everyone has a fun evening. It's still early where most of you are. 
Uh, Chuck Halen, LP, Chuck Halen, thank you so much. John Parsons, Nocturnal, Brett Chauver, uh, Classic Alien Invasion. Thank you so much. So many new people here. I really appreciate the, the turnout today. Uh, Nathan Madden, uh, official page, thanks for having me. Subscribe for sure. Got to go practice. Awesome. Enjoy that practice, and I hope you have some fun with it tonight. Uh, let me see. I have so many cool people here today. This was great. I'm going to jump off and um, let you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Check out that Patreon, patreon.com slash EVHGearTV. And links are in the description as well. And uh, so we'll see you Tuesday night, I hope, for a fun chat. It's going to be really cool because I don't have to push any buttons. I don't have to run cameras. I don't have to run audio. I'll just be watching the live premiere with you guys in the company of Gary Kramer on Kramer Corner, 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific, this Tuesday night. Everyone, you have a great day. And there will be some, actually, there's, if you're looking for T-shirts and cool stuff, watch a little commercial at the end here. Broadstash.com carries all of our official merch. There's stuff from Line 6 uh, Helix Hour. There's Kramer Corner. There's Rocking Dead, EVH and Gear TV. There's stuff for guys and girls in our own fashion line with Broadstash. All kinds of cool stuff. That commercial is coming up right now. Rock and roll. See you real soon. Cheers. Hey, you're still here? Eric Jr. here, reminding you to check out our full lineup of quality merch. Available right now in the Broadstash Boutique. Quality products and fast shipping. Visit Broadstash.com today. I am now on Patreon. If you enjoy my content and wish to support my channel and what I do, then please check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash EVHGearTV. Your support assures the continued growth of this channel and a fun community in which to share our love for Van Halen, music gear, and much more. My name is Eric Redman, Looking Guitar. Video production services provided by Design39 Media. Visit design39media.com for all your website, photography, and video production needs. Microphones for EVH and Gear TV are provided by Rode Microphones. And official Van Halen merchandise is provided by vanhalenstore.com.